At about the same time that a movie called Anonymous tried to prove that Shakespeare wasn't Shakespeare, a digital activism collective called Anonymous allied itself with the Occupy movement. Many of the Occupy Wall Street protesters in New York's Zuccotti Park wore the Guy Fawkes mask associated with Anonymous. The Anonymous group described themselves as hacktivists and their activities as hacktivism. But today we're dealing with what might be called shacktivism, the intervention of Shakespeare and Shakespeare's studies in the humanities and in intellectual life. Half a century ago, Shakespeare's studies seemed securely situated within the traditional humanities, anchoring and drawing students to English departments and to the then flourishing English majors across the country. But now, or perhaps I should say, and now, at a time when English majors have diminished in number, though not in ardor, Shakespeare and Shakespeare studies are participants in the reshaping of what we might perhaps call the big humanities, the humanities without borders, a humanities that includes aspects of science and social science and computing and signally the arts. Ownership of Shakespeare has passed or been expanded in the past century from scholarly generalists and lay enthusiasts at the beginning of the 20th century to scholarly specialists in the middle of the century and up to the end of the 20th centuries, and now really to the public humanities as well, including the media and popular culture. Shakespeare today is a public intellectual, and he's also the cause of public intellectualism in others. Shakespeare in the media or in the corridors of power can feel a long way away from Shakespeare in the halls of academe. The 1% in terms of education and professional training are not necessarily the 1% in terms of influence. Control over how Shakespeare is adapted, filmed, screened, sung, quoted, tweeted, friended, mashed up, and digitally dispersed often lies elsewhere than in classrooms, books, and academic conferences, no matter how diverse and deep our cultural interests. This is a change with real consequences, both for Shakespeare and for the humanities, and also for us who live and practice both. Shakespeare is not only an idea, he or it is a big idea. The opportunity is here and now for Shakespeare scholars and teachers and theaters and libraries and readers to help rethink the role of the humanities, to unsettle settled notions about the now conventional academic division into the humanities, the social sciences, science and engineering, as well as, very importantly, the eroding boundaries between secondary school and college, between college and professional school, between academia and the world or real life. We should seize as many of these chances as we can working in collaboration with other institutions, with other disciplines, with other practices, and with each other. To cite a term made popular by the Occupy movement, Shakespeare, whether produced or read or cited, is a kind of human microphone, repeated and repeating, voiced and revoiced, always rippling out to new audiences, both global and local. If we take this opportunity seriously, and I think we should and we must, Shakespeare, the institution, the idea, the brand, the author, and the works can take the lead in trying to bring about much needed changes, both in how and what we teach, and in understanding why the humanities, the big humanities, the post-humanities humanities, are a necessity rather than a luxury in hard times, in good times, in troubled times, and most especially in these times.